I'm Laura Ingram. This is The Ingram Angle, reporting tonight from Houston. A California politician decides to take border enforcement into her own hands, literally. She's here to talk about it. Plus, another bonus round. How many are there with President Trump? And this time, he's appearing with someone from his VP shortlist. But first, their money, not yours. That's the focus of tonight's angle. <laughs> Tiffany's. No, I'm not talking about the luxury brand and the blue box. I'm talking about the mouthy mayor with the big attitude. Guys, it's your mayor, Tiffany A. Here, you're the people's oh, mayor. Oh. Open the door. Woo! Y'all are ready. <laughs> Won't he do it? Love you. Oh. <laughs> In 2021, she was elected to run Dalton Township just outside of Chicago. But soon enough, Tiffany Henyard, like so many untalented dimwits before her, felt entitled to treat other people's money, the taxpayers, like it was her own. In 2022, when residents figured out what a fraud she was, they voted to recall her. But she didn't care. She refused to leave office. To hell with what the people want. After the recall failed on a technicality in court, Tiffany declared herself as Dalton's forever mayor. After all, she was taught to use her race as a shield and a sword, which she did at a recent township meeting. Now, when you listen to this, I want you to remember, this woman takes home nearly a $300,000 a year salary. Y'all forget I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet, the mayor not the trustees that don't do nothing, that only run their mouth. Y'all don't do no work, no work, because y'all got false narratives out there, and y'all should be ashamed of y'all self. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all selves. Classic liberal. You should be ashamed of yourself for even asking her to defend her actions or her spending. She's Tiffany, and no one questions Tiffany. After years of blatant corruption, this woman is only now under investigation by the FBI. It's about time. And, of course, the state AG's office is looking into her charity after longstanding allegations that she built the taxpayers for extravagant first-class travel and hundreds of thousands of dollars in police overtime for her personal security detail. Dalton police officers drove her from morning till night, racking up hundreds of hours of overtime, costing taxpayers tens of thousands of dollars. We needed those officers to be on the street uh, fighting crime. Officers are being used as Henyard's personal valets. Officers would be sent out to run errands, to do pickups, to do drop-offs. Errands, pickup, well, of course, she's Tiffany. And she is, she's accused of going after businesses also that refused to support her campaign. And that's just for starters. For years, she stonewalled requests by board members for her travel and spending records. Again, because she's Tiffany, she's entitled to live large with OPM. I love money. I love money more than I love the things it can buy. It don't care whether I snore or not. It don't care which God I pray to. There are only three things in this world with that kind of unconditional acceptance. Dogs, donuts, and money. Only money is better. There's only one thing I like better. Other people's money. OPM, it's the best kind of money. That's why liberals love big government. They expect you to work to pay for their lifestyle. And when it comes to the flagrant abuse of tax dollars, Tiffany has LaToya to look up to, as in Cantrell, the mayor of New Orleans. She's always in some hot water, but keeps on swimming anyway. FBI officials are investigating time Cantrell spent with married New Orleans police officer Jeffrey Vapey at a private apartment both on and off the clock. Cantrell even took Vapey, her official security guard, prior to her, his removal to a climate action gathering in Dubai in December. I bet it was hot. Oh, it was all legitimate, though. Again, for climate. And it only cost $14,000. Total sleaze. Again, these officials have all been schooled in big government liberalism. The government 
doesn't exist to serve the people in their minds. It exists to serve the politicians and their donors. But of course, as we see with the Biden White House, they will always claim to have the best of intentions. A vote for Biden is a vote to save democracy. I believe 2024 is going to be the most important election we've had since 1864. I mean it. And the reasons are clear. Democracy is on the ballot. Freedom is on the ballot. Who sits in the White House matters. It matters. In 2024, Nevada, freedom is on the ballot. Freedom is on the ballot, and our democracy is on the ballot. Of course, that's about as believable as Bidenomics is working, the border is secure, and... Of course, I'll respect you in the morning. You aren't protecting democracy or even basic principles of fairness when you prosecute your chief political rival or use OPM to dole out political benefits, or as I like to phrase it, stealing. And that's what Joe Biden's college loan forgiveness plan is. Look, early in my term, I announced a major plan to provide millions of working families with debt relief for their college student debt. Tens of millions of people in debt were literally about to be canceled, their debts. But my MAGA Republican friends in the Congress, elected officials and special interests, stepped in and sued us. And the Supreme Court blocked it. It blocked it. But that didn't stop me. I announced we were going to pursue alternative paths for student debt relief. Yeah, imagine if Trump said that. Like, I'm just going to go around what the court said and figure technicalities, just like dole out money. Talk about blowing up the Constitution. First, Biden blatantly flouts the Supreme Court's ruling, striking down his previous attempt to do this. Second, it rewards bad behavior, failing to repay a loan, and punishes good behavior, people who pay their debts. And third, it's a transparent ploy to shore up support that is flagging among younger voters before November. If you're a working person or retired, look, you're more careful with your money, right? Because Bidenomics has already robbed you blind. Everything's more expensive because of his policies, Full, few, fuel, food, car repairs, air travel, appliances. Heaven forbid you get behind on your bills and have to borrow money because the interest rate's a killer. So maybe you forego big purchases or trips because you actually have to pay off your debts. And then think of the kid who went to community college, maybe learned a trade, paid off his college loans versus the gender studies major who took out loans to study nonsense. Democrats claim that they want to help the disadvantaged students by doing this, but it's really just a bailout of the elites. And hardworking taxpayers are on the hook for all of this because the United States will need to make up for that lost federal revenue in the form of those student loans that won't be paid back. So it's either spending cuts or additional borrowing and any interest associated with that new debt. What we're seeing across the board is an effort by liberal Democrats to build a huge money machine to keep themselves in power forever, if they could have it. Look at what we've seen in L.A., in Chicago, in New York for decades. That's how the system works. And the results, as we see them now, are catastrophic for the working class. Again, the people they care about most. But the people whose pockets are being picked right now need to show up at the polls en masse in November and say, hell no. Leave our money alone. And that's the angle.